Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can catch more videos like this as I do post them. Also, please do check out the description section below where I often put more information about whatever it is I'm talking about in the video. There might also be things I may have forgot to mention or if I had to change a mind, change a heart down the road. There might also be links as well, so check it out. And if you happen to own this speaker or you happen to own another speaker, whatever it might be, or if you just want to talk about these speakers or have a question, please put it in the comments section below. Let's get started. So I'm actually really excited about this video and it's, it's pretty late at night right now. And you know, I was going to wait until tomorrow to make the video, but I said, you know what, let me do it now because I've been writing my notes for days and I kind of just can't take it anymore, you know? <laughs> so I kind of just want to share everything because I know I'm going to go to sleep and it's going to be rolling around in my head until tomorrow. But I have over here, I have the new Polk Signature Elite version. This is from the Elite Series. And the um, Elite Series looks like the old Signature Series, which is right here. And this is the Signature Series with the grill on. And this is actually the Polk website exclusive. It's white and looks exactly the same as this. But let me show you the, show you the difference. So when the grill comes off, this is what you have. So it pretty much looks the same. It looks like the, um, uh, the coloring of the cones are different. And the reason why I have this with me here as well is because I feel like it's best to talk about this speaker and review it, but also compare it to this speaker because they're so similar, but they're different, but they're different. So keep that in mind. So over here, you know, again, uh, the woofer, the coloring is different. And this one has a cap over here on the outside. And this one is just, it's flat right here. They both have the same lettering on each cone and I could take a flashlight and shine it to it, but I don't even think that the camera's gonna show it because the light, well, maybe it will, let me see. It's probably just gonna bounce off, but you know, it just says a uh, Polk Signature Series and there's like a little rim and it says the same thing over here. So in my opinion, in my opinion, this speaker is modified and tuned to sound different than this. The exterior is really excellent on each of these. They're both really nice. It has that like nice Ikea type of furniture look or, you know, the nice stuff that you get in Target, you know, these days that you put together. It just, it has a nice look about it. You know, I like it. Um, the rear has the binding post for a biamp. So if you wanna if you wanna biamp it, you can biamp it very easily. The binding posts are plastic, so they're not you know they're not the greatest, but they work. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like all of the other ones, you know, they work. Um, the speaker's pretty heavy and it's kind of awkward to turn. It comes, it comes assembled in the box, so these legs are already on it. The same thing with this one over here. Down here is the power port, which fires uh, to the floor. And I want to go over the specifications. Let me, where did I, oh geez. I want to go over the specifications for each. Now, I'm going to say this right away. When I first listened to the Elite, the Polk Signature Elite versus the Polk Signature, immediately I, I noticed a difference with the Signature, okay? The Signature, when I take my hand and I put it over the tweeter, you know, I take my hand and I cup it, I put it over, over the tweeter to cover it, and then I'm listening to music, right? And, you know, this is at a pretty low volume, so I'm not going deaf when I do this. So with that said, I can hear like stronger mid-range, like stronger voices and like stronger um, snare drums out of this. And it's almost like this carries more vocals as well than this one does, okay? And the reason why I'm saying that is because there's probably one major difference here. So the tweeter is a one inch Terralene high res dome tweeter. And I hope I said that right. It looks like Terralene, 
Tevelin, something like that. Anyway, each of these has the same tweeter. So whether it's the Signature Elite or the Signature Series, they both have the same tweeter. Okay. The mid base woofers are three, are three six and a quarter inch, uh, dynamic balance mica reinforced polypropylene drivers. Boy, that's a big name. Dynamic balanced mica reinforced polypropylene drivers. <laughs> Try saying that fast a few times. Um, so yeah, so each of these are the same. They're, they're the six and a halves now. This is where it gets different. On the signature series, which is this, the old series, the crossover is at 2.5 kilohertz, okay? And this is also like one of those um, a two and a half ways, or they call it like a, like a stepping crossover or something like that. So the crossover here is at two and a half kilohertz. So everything from everything under two and a half is going down here, okay? Now this driver, is going to get the full range under two and a half, okay? Now on the Signature Elite, it's at two kilohertz. So everything from two kilohertz and under is going to here as well. So this tweeter is getting a little bit more treble or like the upper mid range, okay, than this tweeter. Whereas this, this one, they're sending it down here, okay? Now, when you listen to this speaker, like I said, you know, I took my hand, I put it over the tweeter, and I did the same with this one. You can clearly hear that, you know, the vocals and everything are, are right in here. And then when it, and then when you listen to like this one and this one, this one is all bass, and this one is even less bass. So that's the way that a two and a half way crossover functions: is that this speaker is going to get all the frequencies, and then they're gonna filter out frequencies here, and then they're gonna filter out even more here. Okay, so this gets the least amount of the bass frequency. So just keep that in mind. Same thing with over here, same exact thing. Except over here, there's less strong vocals in here. All right, it, it sounds different, it does, it does. At first I thought maybe it was just gonna be a full like repackage, but it's definitely not. Okay, so the recommended amplifier power with the signature series, the old series, is 20 to 300 watts. With this one, the Elite, it's 50 to 300 watts. So they're saying, you know, give this a little bit more power. I gave both of these 300 watts. And it makes a difference, but it's not such a huge difference like it might with some other speakers, and I'm going to get into that. The frequency response of the old signature series is 26 to 40 kilohertz, and the new series is 32 hertz to 40 kilohertz. So really what they're saying over here is it's rated just a little bit, it's rated with just a little bit less bass. So this one is rated down to, the old series is rated down to 26 hertz in bass. This one is rated down to 32 hertz in bass. The funny thing is, this one sounds bassier. The sensitivity is 90 decibels, and that's the same sensitivity with both of them. They're both 90 decibels, and they're both 52 pounds, so they both weigh the same. And really, the differences are, you know, the caps on here, and this one is flat, and like the, the paint or whatever's on the outside, maybe that material that they use, whatever they covered it with, or whatever it is that, where the color's different, maybe that, that, that has something to do with the sound quality difference. I'm going to speculate that quite possibly somewhere in here, the crossover is different. Maybe, you know, they're using a different crossover. Maybe the uh, capacitors on this one are, are a little bit bigger or um, a little bit better. I don't know. It's all speculation. You know, I'm not going to open this up. And um, a while back, I sold my snake camera thing that I had, uh, which I used to use it for the laundry chute to see if there was dust in there. But I was using it like, you know, a few times and like there was never dust. So anyway, I'm getting off topic.
One other thing that I would like to mention is that both of these speakers feel really solid. They feel really well made. These are large speakers. I'm six foot one and I think I got the seat. Yeah, the seat is pretty much, it's, it's all the way up right now. I'm six foot one. And so you could see, you know, how big these speakers are. I think they're like 44 or 45 inches high. They got some nice room on the top so you could easily put a Atmos speaker or you know, something else, maybe like a small uh, bookshelf speaker on here if you want to add some type of strange height channel like I tend to do. I just tend to, you know, throw a, I mean, that's, that's really the lazy way. I just put like a height channel on top over here or something. And, you know, for this room anyway, for right now, um, you know, that's my height channel. So the nice thing about this speaker though is that it does have, you know, some nice space on top. So with both of these speakers, and especially the old Signature Series. With the old Signature Series, this pairs really well with the Parasound 2125 V.2 THX Ultra 2 that I have the review of, so check that out. Because that Parasound is a really warm sounding amp, and it's also pulled back sounding with the, um, the vocals, um, snare drums, cymbals, stuff like that. And this speaker is very forward sounding, very sharp sounding, very right to you. So pairing this with an amp that's very bright, very sharp sounding, probably not the greatest idea. Um, this plus the Ankyo receiver or the Ankyo receiver hooked up to the Emotiva because the, the Emotiva amp yeah, pretty much to me seems like a, um, a chameleon. It just kind of blends with anything that you feed it. I have the Marantz, I think it's a 6006 uh, Wi-Fi media player streamer thing over here. And that thing is Marantz warm. And when I put, and I hooked that up to the Emotiva, it sounds just like it. So I tried that, hooked it, I hooked up the Marantz and Emotiva to this, you know, sounds the best. If I use the Parasound, sounds even better. Okay, so maybe that wasn't the best, the power sound is the best. With this speaker, this speaker is calmer with that type of um, like more forward sound. It's, it's less sharp sounding, it's more reserve sounding. It's definitely refined over the old signature and I have a feeling this is just gonna take the place of this. I mean, it just makes sense because in the manual, it also shows um, a center channel speaker, bookshelf speaker, all, you know, elite. So with that said, what was I talking about? Total blank, I just completely drew a total blank. Oh, I hate when that happens. Well, anyway, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna back up a little bit myself. So this, this speaker is definitely more pulled back sounding, okay? It doesn't sound as good as the Polk Reserve 700. So if you could buy the 700, if you could afford the 700, I mean, that's no doubt, it's the best choice. But at 550 for this versus 450 for this, this is a better choice. It just sounds much, much better. I'm also going to do a video of the Polk RTI series and the Polk Monitor 2s and compare it to these. So, you know, check that out. It's, it's going to be following at some point in the future. So with that said, this speaker is a calmer speaker. It's definitely a little bit warmer sounding than this. This is a very bright sounding speaker, okay? And I think that this one, the bass, sounds better than the bass on this one. It just sounds a little bit deeper. It sounds a little bit fuller. This speaker is just refined. Refined is, is probably the best word for the speakers that they went into this and said, you know what, we're gonna use the same parts because probably the warehouse is probably stocked with them <laughs> or whatever. Um, so they came in here and they just tuned this speaker differently. And you know, it, it does sound good. There's no doubt about it. So let me continue. Um, Okay, so I said that, you know, a neutral amp, a warm amp, especially here, you, you know, especially here with the old signature, you want to go warm. This one neutral, 
um, you know, warm as well. I probably would not hook this up to a bright sounding amp unless if maybe, you know, bright sounding speakers are what appeals to your hearing. And of course, you, you, know, you know, your room acoustics and, and all that. Um, you know, this, this sounds a little bit better in a room with carpeting, but it does well in this echo chamber that I have right here of, of tile. The speaker blends well with various amps. It, it, it really takes on the sound of the amp pretty well. This one, not as much, which is why I said, you know, hook this up to a warmer sounding amp, but this one is pretty good. It, it, it seems to blend pretty well. I hooked it up with everything that I just mentioned. And, um, you know, I didn't really hate it with anything. Any type of acoustic music, the strings on the guitars are very sharp. Sharper on this, and you know, I think that's because a lot of the strings are also coming through here. A little bit less sharp on here, but they sound better on here. They sound a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more calm, a little bit more tamed. I think that the strings sound more realistic on the Polk Signature Elite. The strings are though very crisp. They are very clear sounding. So, you know, there isn't any worries about that. The vocals, okay. The vocals have a very large sound, okay. The vocals really come out of the speaker. They really uh, project. This speaker, the vocals are a little bit sharper or a little bit edgier than this speaker. Okay, so the Elite, again, in my opinion, wins over the original signature. Something else that I noticed when I was listening to the vocals was that it sounded like something else. And, you know, that's with a whole bunch of different songs that I tested, was that it sounded a bit like the Bowers and Wilkins 603. And that's that it has kind of like this type of a sound. So, you know, I found that to be kind of interesting. It's not quite as uh, pronounced as, you know, the Bowers and Wilkins, uh, as the Bowers and Wilkins <laughs> Anniversary Edition 603 or whatever, but it does have that same type of uh, projection of sound. These speakers are both also excellent for large rooms. I wouldn't put this into a small room. I, I tried, I put it into a small room, not really a small room, more like a medium sized room. But I think that this speaker is a type of speaker that you want that's in a room that's like 15 by 20, or maybe, you know, 20 by 25, something like that. It has very big, large sound. And the sound that comes from it really pushes forward throughout all the drivers. I don't really feel like I'm so much as just listening to one. Like I don't like really hear this when it's playing. Sometimes I might feel like I'm hearing the tweeter a little bit much at times. But with that said, I was doing a test where I was playing music and then I was just kind of like going like this with the grill, moving it. Putting on the grill seems to take away just the smallest, smallest bit of you know, maybe a bit of sharpness or whatever. So if you feel like it might be a bit sharp, try the grill, see if it helps at all. Because I was going back with it a lot doing that. I must have did it like a hundred times. I kept waving it in front and I was listening and I definitely think that it sounds, um, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit less with it. Okay, so an anything acoustic, any type of acoustic music, I thought really sounded excellent um, on the Signature Elite, okay? The, the old signature can be a bit too sharp at times and it doesn't quite have that, that like little bit of warmth that this has. So I found this to be very good with all different types of acoustic music. I enjoyed it with uh, jazz. I enjoyed it with, um, with rock and metal. I think that this is a good all round speaker overall for the $550 price tag. Of course, this is a Polk Audio and you know, they run their sales. So at some point you'll see this for, you know, 500, you'll see it for 450. You'll probably see it for 375 one day. You know, who knows, Polk has a you know, tendency to do that, especially after they put out a speaker for a bit, they start to run sales. So at 
at the price range, it's going to be very hard to beat. That's, that's the point of this. It's going to be hard to beat, especially on sale. The sound stage overall is pretty wide. It's a pretty wide sounding speaker. I was walking all around it. I was walking around the room. I mean, I was like 15 feet away from it, you know, on the side of it. So kind of like where I am over here, I was like 15 feet away. I was elsewhere. I was all over the place walking around and it's pretty wide sounding, you know, how the sound comes out. Unlike the uh, the Polk or the Reserve or the R700, which I love, I think it's a great speaker. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, you know, that was a little bit more, a little bit more narrow and focused, whereas this one is just a lot wider. It has a pretty wide soundstage overall. I tested out this speaker with the 120 watts in the Ankyo. I tested it out with 150 watts in, in the um, Parasound. And I also, also converted the Parasound over to Monoblock and put it in 400 watt mode to try out this speaker just to see how it, you know, how it sounded, even though the recommended range is 50 to 300. I just wanted to, you know, give it a little test. It wasn't very loud anyway. Um, you know, it sounded pretty good. I don't, I don't think that it needs 400 watts at all. I think that the um, 300 watt range uh, is perfectly fine. It sounds good. It sounded good with 120 watts, to be honest, but, you know, that extra wattage added a little bit more fullness to it. But if you only have a receiver and your receiver is putting out 120 watts, I don't think that this is a speaker that you should you know, avoid because it does play loud and it seems to take the power and use it well. I don't feel like it's, it's you know, absorbing the power like some other speakers do. The equalizer. Using an equalizer with these speakers, especially the Signature Elite, it works very well. If you feel like you have some brightness to it, a little bit of sharpness, I used the bass and treble knobs on the Ankyo. It also has an EQ as well. I think it's a seven band EQ or whatever it is. So using the knob for treble, which has a plus or minus uh, 10 decibels on it, just doing like a minus one or a minus two takes away sharpness like amazingly like it just it just brings it down it calms it down and I know that there was other speakers that I tested you know over this past year and you know potentially over the years as well where I would go over to the equalizer and like nothing I would do would help that tweeter <laughs> you know this tweeter responds very well and it also responds very well to the bass uh, on the equalizer because the equalizer has like 25 hertz, it has 45 hertz, and then 63 hertz. So those are like your three uh, bass frequencies in the lower range. I boosted up to 25 hertz by six. I boosted up to 45 hertz by six. Um, and I mean, it sounded good. It, 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 you know, I, I thought it sounded great, especially for a speaker, you know, that's this price. So if you do have an equalizer, you know, don't be afraid to use it with this. It didn't ruin the sound, like some other speakers that I tested in the past where, you know, using the equalizer just completely changed the sound. It just ruined it. You know, it was no longer clear. This one, I even actually turned up the bass knob then a plus five or so. And then I think I even boosted up to 63 hertz, if I remember, about like a plus two or plus three. I was really just trying to see like what I can do to make it sound worse. And it just seemed to accept what I was giving it. I mean, I wasn't, you know, driving it at, you know, very insane volume levels that it, it wouldn't still be clean. Okay, so, you know, just don't confuse that. You know, the volume was still clean. Um, with the Emotiva hooked up to it, I did though, uh, turn it up to a pretty decent level a few times. I was kind of far away from it, like really far. Then I just kind of like wanted to listen to the sound as it went from low to loud. And I mean, overall, it handles it. It handles the sound very well. It handles um, the sound pretty well at, at a low volume, you know, decently, you know, at a mid volume. And then when it gets louder, you know, it still sounded good. So I didn't really have any problems with it at the various volume ranges. I know some speakers, when they kind of get louder, they, you know, they kind of, you know, sound weird, but um, 
you know, this one overall sounds good. And again, you know, you could play with your equalizer to, you know, fine tune it. So there's a song from the band Mountain. Actually, there's a couple of songs from, from the band Mountain uh, that I enjoyed. One of them is You'll Never Be Alone. The guitars sounded really nice, really crisp. Leslie West's voice was really projected coming out of this. And um, it sounded good as well through the Parasound and the Emotiva, you know, playing that song. Another song from the band Mountain is called In Your Face. The kick drums, the snare drums, and again, Leslie West's voice and his uh, guitars really sounded good on this. Like I felt like I just wanted to go over there and just like crank it up. You know, when you're really enjoying something, like let me just go over there and turn it up, you know? Um, yeah, I think, I think it sounded really good. Um, well, again, all types of rock, metal, all that stuff sounded great. One other song that I wanted to point out, or should I say another band, is the band called Pete. So it's Pete with a period after it, and it's hard to find because of the name, and they only made one CD. Anyway, there's a song on the album called Sweet Days. So Sweet Days is probably the, the easiest way to you know, find the band Pete. But I've always, I mean, I love that CD, but I never liked the quality of the recording. And it's one of those bands that, you know, the way the cymbals were recorded, it, it can make a lot of speakers get carried away. Anyway, the signature series with the power sound, it was probably like one of the best that I ever heard that song sound, or should I just say that CD in general. Probably the next favorite or Maybe about the same is listening to it on the uh, definitives, like the uh, definitive Bipolar Towers in the 1960s or even the old 7006 that's sitting over here all stuffed in the corner. <laughs> um, and you know, it's kind of more so even, it's more so stuffed in the corner because I just, I'm always moving it. <laughs> and then when I put it back, sometimes I was like, all right, you stay in there, but I know I'm gonna move you soon. So to sum it up, which should you buy and, you know, is this speaker right for you? This speaker, I think, at $550 is going to be very hard to beat. It sounds better than speakers that are more expensive, and it sounds better than speakers that are cheaper. If you're the type of buyer that waits for sales, then you're really going to appreciate it. So at $550, I think it's a great value, and I think it's better than, you know, other speakers that are in the 550 price range or 600 or even maybe 800 price range. Is it better than the Polk R700s? No, it's not better than that. But I think that they try to tune the speaker so that it sounds a little bit closer to those speakers and kind of make it like, well, this is a much cheaper version of that type of maybe tonal balance just that this is a little bit, maybe a little bit uh, brighter than the Reserve. The Reserve to me, I found to be pretty kind of neutral or maybe neutral with a little bit warmish. But this speaker is a good choice if you're using, you know, home theater receiver power. If you don't want to purchase, you know, a speaker from another brand that has like its own built-in sub to it. Um, or you're just looking for a speaker that you know, is really good for a budget. It is nice and clear. The sounds come through. I don't feel like at any time I was struggling to hear anything. I never felt like I was struggling to hear anything. The only thing would be sometimes, like I said, if you go over to that knob on your treble and just turn it down a tinge, it might make it absolutely perfect sounding. So that's a lot better than when you purchase a speaker and you're struggling to hear things that you've been listening to for years, and you're like, okay, give me the rest of the sounds. Give me the rest of the sounds. I'm not hearing everything. Just give it to me. You know, so I think that this speaker for a budget, you know, for me, I'm giving it a thumbs up, no doubt about it. Would I purchase this one still? Probably not. Probably not. You can find this for pretty cheap. If you do want this, I guess, I'm sure that they're probably going to, you know, uh, close these out at some point. I would just consider using probably a lot of equalizer on this or, again, hook this up to a really warm amp.
But I do think that this is the better choice. It's just more balanced, refined version. So that's it for this late night video. I do hope that you found it at least somewhat helpful or informative. I always try to be as comprehensive as possible with whatever it is I am reviewing or explaining. So again, thank you for watching and you know, I appreciate it. Have a great day.